Empty the chain run. And how do you do that? Four six seconds, point eight point feet, everything you got. Everything you got. Turn that shit up. Let's go. Let's go. Welcome to Scoop World Order, five-star phenom edition. We got a huge commitment uh, last night, one of the biggest ones in Ohio State history. Uh, Jeremiah J.J. Smith, a wide receiver, 6'3", 190, out of Shamana Madonna down in Florida, a South Florida Express kid, has decided to commit to Brian Hartline and the Ohio State Buckeyes. He's currently listed as the number two rated player in all the country, behind only... Dylan Riola. So right now, Ohio State is holding on to the number one and number two commitment. He is, by some services, the highest rated wide receiver in recruiting service history. So he's a pretty special cat. Uh, I'm going to do a little basic comparison of who he reminds me of, uh, an NFL surefire Hall of Famer that all you guys have heard of. And we're going to break down his highlight tape. So I appreciate you guys, as always. But first, as always, I'm grateful for you guys. I'm thankful for you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Uh, this is going to be a fantastic episode. Please like the content down below. That's huge for us. And also, I want you to comment after watching his film, who does he remind you of? Is a comp different than who I say? We'll see. I think when you guys see who I'm comparing him to, you guys are going to be very excited. Uh, and if he can be anywhere near what this player was, it'll be fantastic for the Bucks. So we're going to go into a little bit on JJ. Hang on one second. All right, we are back. I have pulled his composite rating. This is from 247 Sports. They pull uh, all the nationals and uh, rivals on three. Composite, number one wide receiver, number two in the nation. What a fantastic pickup. There's JJ. Uh, again, JJ is about as good looking of a receiver as you could dream up in the, uh, in the realm of recruiting um pro ready it looks fantastic and my comp i watched his film uh studied him pretty hard before i came on to do this uh is this guy now most of you guys don't know this guy this old grainy photo um but you see the definition you see the hot or excuse me the college readiness julio jones so julio is a guy who is probably one of the the prototypes uh there's jj again Again, notice the muscle definition, the stature, the size. Uh, very, very intimidating kid. Um, a tough cover. You know, he's a guy that you kind of dream it up when you want an X receiver. I'm going to dig into the highlights now. But man, oh man, is this thing fun to watch. So I'm going to crank these on for you guys real quick. All right. So JJ is generally the X receiver. He's by himself most of the time. Kind of what Marvin Harrison currently does uh, here. You just see him run past guys, explosive, long, 6'3", 195, uh, and growing. Um, some sites list him at 6'4". Generally, those are a little overstated. I'd say 6'3". But just a polished kid. He's a kid that could probably play this year for Ohio State, which is it sounds crazy, but he's that good. He's that big. He's that mature here. This is blown coverage. You know, Obviously, that's an easy one, but... Um, it's funny. He wears 18 like, like Marv does, but he is a, an absolute freak show. He's a guy that I think that people are going to be excited about. You know, he's, he's an elite, uh, seven on seven player. So he'll get developed by the South Florida express guys. Uh, obviously that program is the best seven on seven program in the country. Uh, and they are hugely, hugely popular with Ohio state right now, having us gotten Brandon Ennis and Carnell Tate, uh, in this past class. So, uh, JJ is going to join him. I imagine Jojo trader is probably next. Uh, and then in the future, Malachi, Tony is a kid who's a big Ohio state fan. Um, the next San Antonio Holmes, this kind of kid, really explosive, a shorter stature kid, but, um, watching JJ here, you know, you can see why you'd be excited if you're Dylan Rayola. Uh, this guy's a prototype X, uh, you know, his freshman year, he could be, you know, snapping the ball and throwing to, Brandon Ennis, Carnell Tate, and uh, JJ. And if you if you line them up, honestly, and you wanted a perfect X, you put JJ at X. He's going to start the day against Ohio State. Put Brandon Ennis on the slot, do the dirty work. He's a nasty player, really, really good player. And put Carnell at the Z, which is kind of your speeds through your Joey Galloway flanker type. And I think you have a really fantastic mix there. I mean, this is a, uh, you know, Brian Hartline obviously is on just a tremendous streak of, of, uh, basically being NIL proof, you know, and, and again, that, that has a lot to do with his, his 
um, track record of getting guys to the NFL, his personality. Um, you know, I mean, he, he's got it going on. He's a young guy, played in the NFL, smooth, um, great technical coach just from his time in the NFL. Obviously, he was a guy that uh, he worked really hard and, and he had a great career, but he was a guy that had to be a technician. Like there's some guys that can get by with natural ability. Brian had to kind of squeeze every last drop out of a out of the orange, so to speak, and, and he did it. And that's why he was he was so good. I mean, he had a, a game where he had 250 yards plus receiving, which is insane in, in the NFL. Um, and these guys really take to him. I think he's a leader. I think Brian's a future head coach. And I think that these guys, you know, they all gravitate towards him because he can take a guy like J.J. Smith and, you know, and he's already refined. I mean, you see him come off his top ends. You see his releases. I mean, most most schools are scared to death to press the kid because they'll run right past their cornerbacks. But, you know, he's a guy that you can tell he's been coached. Uh, he's not just out there um, on talent. He's supremely talented, obviously. But he's a guy that, you know, he, he runs good routes, uh, great hands catcher. But Brian can accentuate that even further with some of the nuanced stuff that he can coach these guys on. Uh, Brian can coach these guys hard, you know, because he's got a, a deep room. So if somebody else doesn't want to do it or they don't want to do it his way, he can put the next guy in and you're still going to have another five star, another four star, um, you know, you know, type. And uh, it's a girl credit to Brian that we lost Jackson Smith and Jigba, who is a preseason all everything receiver. And we didn't really miss a beat with Marvin and Emeka. Obviously, having Jackson, I think, would be a, a significant upgrade over Julian Fleming. But this is kind of how the way college football is. Sometimes you can't predict injuries. You can't predict um, opting out for the bowl game. Uh, you know, we wish we could have seen those three on the field together because I, I don't know how you defend that, but it is what it is. Uh, but the really nice thing that Brian's doing as he's stacking up these five-star receivers is he's getting different types of receivers as well. They're not all the same. Obviously, I think JJ is probably the best of the crew. Uh, there's recruiting services that have him as the highest rated receiver ever, which, you know, when you think about Julio Jones, AJ Green, some of the super high level prolific type wide receivers that have come through college football over the last 10, 15 years. I mean, that's saying something. And, and he just, you know, he reminds me of Julio. He's, he's big, he's intimidating, uh, that stature, the muscle definition. I, uh, I don't know. I, I just think that it's, it's something that's really, um, it's really fantastic. I, I, and again, like he hasn't even been in a college strength program yet. I mean, he hasn't even been with, uh, you know, a college nutritionist yet. You know, he's a kid that has a lot of, uh, he has a lot of upside. So, you know, I'm not saying he's polished or anything, but he's the kind of guy like Julio walked into Alabama day one and was a starter and was a, a phenom. And uh, that's the kind of guy JJ can be. I think that there's going to be real opportunity. He's going to get there right after Marvin declares for the draft next year. A Mecca will probably go to the draft too. Um, so you easily could be looking at JJ, uh, Brandon Innes and Carnell Taze are three starting wide receivers, um, you know, in the first snap of 2024. So it's, you know, it'll be here before we know it. Again, this was a, something that most projected Nevada buck put in an equal sign for this. I swear it was probably eight, nine months ago. It's been a long time, but that being said, you know, to, to finally get it done, to get the commitment, to kind of, um, become a leader of the class with Dylan Rayola. And uh, keep the momentum. I, I think it's important when these big time guys commit early because good players want to play with good players. You know, I think that there's a lot of excitement in the program when you get a five star kid to commit this early when there's no real reason to, other than he just maybe is tired of the recruiting process. But it doesn't mean that his his uh, his deal's over. I mean, obviously, all the big time teams are still going to keep calling them. They're still keep going after them. You know, recruit or commitment nowadays. Um, it doesn't mean much, but you know, with some kids, it means more than others. And with some schools like Ohio state, I think that, um, yeah, they can kind of flex their muscle and, and, and tell kids maybe not to visit. I don't know if you can do that to JJ Smith just cause he can go do whatever he wants. Cause he's so highly rated, but, um, I think he's going to be, he's going to be a phenom. He's a guy that, again, we've got great ties through bill green to South Florida express. Um, you know, the, the kid's a phenom. I mean, like I said, he played with Ennis and Tate and, He's not scared of anything. Jojo Trader, um, Mally Tony, you know, those guys won the national championship seven on seven in Vegas last year. And uh, again, this is, uh, he's not scared of anything. This is his film uh, from the previous year. This is his sophomore year. Uh, I put both tapes on here just to stretch it out a little bit so you guys could see kind of the progression. Obviously, he's not nearly as big this year, but he is, uh, 
you know, even as a sophomore, you could tell he's dominant, making big plays. And again, the crazy thing is he still has a whole other year at high school. Um, so when you watch this tape, it looks like you're watching a, a senior who's about to go to college and you realize this guy's got another year. Um, don't believe he's a guy that would uh, reclassify. I mean, he'd have to already have done that by now, but he is a guy that, you know, again, you can see a little thinner. Um, at this point, obviously, year over year, guys get bigger in high school. Um, they get uh, more pronounced from the muscular definition. and uh, But you see uh, just the ability. I mean, you see the explosion. Because, again, he's the rare big guy who's 6'3". He's probably about 175 in this. And his new video is about 195. So you see uh, the explosion just grew and grew and grew. He can run past guys. Again, that's a great route. You know, gets the corner to bite. Nice, easy um, out and up. Um, and again, he's just your prototypical X. And he plays big time ball. They won the state championship. Shaman Madonna prep. Big time ball. Um, you know, they played Heritage, which is a big game. That was like the Ohio State. Basically, Dream Bowl. Because you have, you know, you had Tate. You had... Uh, Excuse me, not Tate. You had Ennis. Fletcher at the time was an Ohio State guy. Obviously, he's uh, decommitted since then. Mally Tony uh, plays for um, for American Heritage. And then you've got uh, Shaman of Madonna. They have uh, JoJo and JJ. So, you know, there are a lot of J's over there. But there you see him dunking on a kid. Again, this is, you know, th th this is stuff that gives DBs nightmares when a guy can high point, literally jump over you, snatch it, hands catch. You know, I mean, that's just, that's just, a lot of a lot of hard work, a lot of grinding, and again, I think once you know he gets to Ohio State and he gets ingrained in that culture in that wide receiver room, you know it's only going to go up. He gets married to that jugs machine here, blown coverage on a uh, on a halfback pass again, you know. But he, you know, when he gets behind guys, they're not catching them. That's the thing you, you see a lot in these highlight videos is once he gets a step on a guy, even guys that are they look smaller than him him on film, they're not catching them. There he lays out great catch uh, with the better balls to score. Um, but yeah, I'd love to see your comments on this one because I think he is the truth. I think this is a guy that people are going to love at Ohio state. You know, we love Marvin Harrison jr. I think he's a lot like Marv. I think he's obviously he's more raw than Marvin just because Marvin's dad was a hall of famer. Marvin's dad was one of the greatest technical route running, uh, flow of the game knowledge, you know, players of all time. And he, I mean, his, his quarterback was Peyton Manning, you know, one of the most prolific duos in the history of, of the NFL. So those guys really knew the game, really saw uh, inside each other's minds, so to speak, like like great quarterbacks and great receivers do when they have that chemistry. And Marvin's kind of that same beast. He's the kind of guy that really knows the game, just absolutely insane work ethic. You know, obviously he's a late night guy at the whack, early morning guy at the whack, uh, addicted to the process, no distractions, r r declines all NIL invitations, you know, because he's all about ball. He doesn't want any distractions. He's not going to do any commercials. He just wants uh, – he doesn't need a car. His dad's a millionaire. So um, that, that's – you know, if there's a current player comp, I'd say Marvin just because of the same size, stature. Um, you know, I, you could tell the kid works hard. You know, I mean, that seven-on-seven seven stuff is – as much as people want to, you know, laugh about it, seven-on-seven seven is brutal because there's nowhere to hide – man coverage across the board, you know, you got to get open, a lot of trash talking, a lot of pressure. So I think there's really good stuff that comes out of playing for the South Florida Express because, you know, they'll find out if you're a phony or not real quick on the seventh circuit because those guys, they don't hold back. It's no holds barred. Um, again, you can see the kind of red zone weapon this kid is. He's just a monster down, uh, down in the paint. You, you got to double him. And again, I just like I'm just super excited for this kid. He's been a great kid um, to get to know uh, via the South Florida Express guys. And you know, again, when you get these like kids that are superstar athletes, but they're also fantastic kids, it really bodes well for the future of Ohio State. So you know, locking up him and Dylan at the top of your class, having the it's basically having the first and second pick in the draft um, is about as good as it gets as a start for Ryan Day and Ohio State. So kudos to Ryan Day, kudos to Mark Pantoni. Uh, and obviously the big kudos to Brian Hartline, uh, who's been dominant uh, in finding wide receivers. But, you know, when you got to go against Brian Hartline as a wide receiver and you're in Miami, it's real tough. Because, I mean, you, you know, Brian's, he had a lot of time down there with the Dolphins. He knows his way around. You know, people remember him from when he played for the Dolphins. So, you know, and, and he's just, like I said, he's a great recruiter. He's a guy that he works hard at it. 
it's not easy. It's not, you know, he makes it look easy, but it's not easy. You got to relate to these kids. You got to build trust with these kids. You got to build trust with their, their coaches, with their parents, um, whatever the situation is. It could be the high school coach, seven on seven coach, whatever it is. But uh, some of these guys are, they're, they're hard to get a hold of. They're hard to get to, hard to get to the parents, hard to get them to see the big picture sometimes with the NIL stuff. Cause the thing about Brian is he's been NIL proof. Like every other coach is struggling and losing commits because of potential NIL deals. Brian doesn't. And I mean, he's going with guys that are flashy guys that can demand a lot of money. Um, you know, obviously Carnell Tate had a lot of stuff going on with Tennessee and their NIL program. Um, you know, the South Florida kids are, you know, a lot of them are, they're in the market for the NIL stuff. So, um, again, we'll just watch this first play one last time and we'll lock this thing down. But again, I, I love watching this tape. It just, it gets you excited for the future of Ohio State because Dylan Real is the highest rated quarterback in the history of recruiting services right now. And there's some services that say, uh, JJ is the highest rated receiver in the history of recruiting services. So, I mean, you, you get that matchup together. Then you remember you're bringing in Tate and Ennis this year. It's, it's some major, 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 major stuff. So, um, I'm going to wrap this thing up guys. Appreciate you guys. As always, I think, uh, you're going to love this one. Again, I want to know your comp. You just watched the film with me. Uh, you saw the excellence. You saw the high point. You saw the explosion. He's a big time hurdler, 110, 300 hurdler. Really, really, really twitched up guy. Uh, but who is your comparison? Write that down uh, in the comments below. I appreciate you guys. As always, shout out where you're from. I love when you guys are doing that. You guys are still doing that. Love knowing where you guys are watching from. Appreciate you guys as always. Um, and I want to hear those comps. Is it AJ Green? Is it Julio? Is it DeAndre Hopkins? Is it, uh, you know, it's going to be a guy with some some burners because I'm mean, JJ can run. You know, he's a, he's a track guy, uh, track star type guy. So, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. But, you know, Julio is kind of the guy who's a 4 3 guy, 6 2 ish, 6 3 ish, muscular, early impact guy, three and out first round guy. It reminds me a lot of JJ. Just had to say, you know, I'm looking at, I always look at the high school photos of the two. Uh, similar, really similar body types. I mean, that was, uh, I talked to some guys um, in scouting and that's who they said. And I was like, yeah, I, I completely agree. Uh, I stamped Julio on him and I think you guys are going to love him. So let me know. Appreciate you guys. As always, we are going to be on Bucket Scoop going crazy leading up to the Georgia game. Uh, I'm going to do some breakdown stuff on Georgia's defense. I've been watching a lot of their film, really interesting defense and they run a ton of stuff. So, you know, it's going to be something that'll be interesting to see what Ryan Day does to combat it. So I appreciate you guys as always. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I hope you guys uh, get on BuckeyeScoop.com because we're on that thing. and It is going crazy right now. Um, so thank you so much, Buckeye Nation. And thank you, Scoop family. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Go Bucks.